recognize uh, what was what was inside this man and what God was doing with him. And I just had a wake up call last summer as he was at the Rogers Missions Conference, and I heard him offer his presentation for the first time, and I thought, my sakes, um, we need, I need what he has, and I think this church needs what he has, and he's not a well man, he's had a lot of health issues of late, been in the hospital, almost died, he's had some surgeries and things that he would probably tell you, but I'm telling you, it's not a deterrent to him serving the Lord. He's a member of Rogers Baptist Church in Garland, Texas, and he is a missionary sponsored sent forth by that church to a very international place in this world that has, has a twin in Texas called Houston. The place where he works is Chicago, and he's going to talk about that, and I want you to give him great attention because some people just say something. This man has something to say. Come right on, Brother Edward Fort. Actually, I, I lost my ear here. I lost my other ear. It got cut off. Come on up here and sit up here, guys. All the way to the front. You guys are going to get embarrassed by me. Uh, these guys are from the Karini tribe in uh, Myanmar. Uh, the Burmese government has been attacking the capital uh, of this uh, uh, province uh, severely in the last uh, few months. And then the state just south of them, Karen State, over 6,000 of their people have fled into Thailand now. But uh, they're, you guys are all from San Antonio? Yes. Okay, so they drove in from San Antonio. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to really embarrass you. Stand up, turn around, and introduce yourself. <laughs> Tell us who you are. Amen. <laughs> Come on. You're next. <laughs> My name is Terrence Chan. I'm from Thailand. I came to the United States in 2011. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vicky. I am a day sister. And I urge you to introduce me to this pastor. It's good to see you all here. Okay, praise the Lord. We've, we've done some teaching on, on video with uh, Day, and that's how we met her. And uh, her best friend, I've known her best friend since they were little. You, you guys were all born in refugee camp, right? Yeah, okay. All right, I, I thought so, wasn't sure. So, but anyway, my name's Edward Fort. On October 30th, 1974, I got saved. You know, I, I went to an independent Baptist church. I, I grew up in a Southern Baptist church. You know, they didn't preach the gospel. When I was 11 years old, I got baptized because that's what they told me I needed to do. So I got baptized. I joined the church. I sang in the choir. I put money in the offering. I went to Sunday school. I went to training union. I went to vacation Bible school. You know, anything available, I did it. But see, it was I, 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 I. It wasn't Jesus Christ. And then on October the 27th, I went to an independent Baptist church, and they preached hellfire and brimstone. And I realized for the first time in my life, I was a sinner, as if I didn't know that. I already knew that. But that I was responsible for my sin. And that if I didn't deal with my sin, I was going to die in my sins and my religion and go to hell being a member of a Baptist church. And I left that night not getting saved because I used all the excuses. I'm baptized, I joined the church, I sang in the choir, I put money in the offering plate. You know, I'm, I'm a good person. And yet I was wicked as the devil. You know, my heart was still wicked. And uh, I did it, you know, I, I, didn't know, I didn't know what was wrong. 
I was under deep conviction all day Monday. I'm in high school. All day Tuesday, I'm under deep conviction. All day Wednesday, I'm under deep conviction. And I said, I've got to go back to that church. I don't know what it is about that church. I got to go. I didn't need to go to the church. I needed to get saved, but I didn't know that. And as I was driving the car to the church, I realized if I crash this car, I'm going to die and go to hell. And boy, did it bother me. Let me turn my phone off so it doesn't ring in the middle of the service. And, uh, but uh, I- anyway, um, uh, I, uh, I pulled the car off the side of the road. I started to pray. I didn't even know what to pray. I said, God, I, 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 don't, I don't understand what's going on. And then all of a sudden, I understood. Jesus Christ didn't die for the sins of the world. He died for me. Jesus Christ didn't want to save the world. He wanted to save me. It became personal. And to this, to this day, I do not know how I knew it. But I knew three things right, right then, right then and there, immediately. God may ask me to do what I don't want to do. God may ask me to go where I don't want to go. And God may ask me to change what I don't want to change. Am I willing to do it? And the answer is yes, yes, yes. I was 15 years old in high school. I was a very timid person. And uh, so I'm going to sit down, so just enjoy yourself. But uh, probably for a while anyway. This is a funny ear thing, and it really... I'm going to stick it somewhere else. There we go. Out of work. And uh, I, immediately I was on fire for the Lord. So I went back to my Baptist church and I asked the pastor, I said, Pastor, if you died today, would you go to heaven? He says, young man, I'm a Baptist pastor. And I thought, wow, maybe he didn't understand what I said. <laughs> it's possible. So I asked him again. Brother Margarine, if you died today, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? He said, young man, I think you need to get up and leave. I never went back. I went to the church that told me how to get saved. And I was on fire immediately. I went back to school, started telling everybody about Jesus Christ. I started going to the hospital, a little community. I'd, I'd just go from room to room, and, and, and anybody in the room, I'd read the Bible to them, I'd pray. Didn't know what I was doing. I was dumb as a box of rocks, and, and, uh, but I was on fire for God, wanted to do something for God. I started going to the jailhouse. Every now and then, there'd be a drunk in the jail, and I asked the guard, can I preach? And they thought that was unique, so they let me. Uh, there was a, uh, a motel in the town over next two hours, so I started going to the motel, And I'd knock on doors in the motel and talk to people as they came in and out. And uh, so I got excited about that. And and, uh, uh, so I was just on fire for God. And then I went off to Bible college. And Bible college and Bible college. (laughs) Do you say, what did you learn? Not much. (laughs) You know what I learned? I would have been a whole lot better off if I'd have stayed at the church and let my pastor train me. But anyway... I ended up in Chicago. So September the 9th, 1976, I ended up in Chicago. Oh, I'm at a Rogers Baptist Church. I don't know how to back this up now. There we go. And uh, pastor's picture's in there somewhere. And, uh, but anyway, uh, we're at a Rogers Baptist Church in Garland. Uh, everybody knows uh, Pastor Thomas. Uh, thank God for Pastor and Mrs. Thomas here. It's been a blessing to be here with them this week and spend time with them. Uh, the church... Uh, uh, we, we first went to Rogers, I think, in probably about 1989, somewhere along there. And, uh, uh, you know, we have been together ever since and, and partnering together to, to serve the Lord in the city of Chicago. Chicago, the Babylon of America. You know, God has literally sent the whole world to, a, to Chicago. No shots, no passports, no foreign governments to deal with, no visas. You know, just preaching the gospel. Everybody is there. And you know what? 
It is our mandate to reach everybody. I, I remember in 1976, I'd start knocking on doors, and I, I met people from Guatemala and Iraq and Iran and Saudi Arabia and Yemen and Qatar and Bahrain and, and, and uh, uh, Greece and, and Armenia and Syria and Lebanon and Jordan. And I'd hand people gospel tracts, and they'd hold them upside down. But I've got gospel tracts back there. If, if there wasn't something English on it, you wouldn't know which way to hold it. I mean, you take the Karenni language. You wouldn't know which way it is. Matter of fact, sometimes I had to sit at and look at it. I know because the little, the little dog legs and the, and the dots are on the bottom. And uh, I learned how to type in Karenni. And those gospel tracts I sent, I, I typed those gospel tracts. I didn't translate it. I got help. But uh, I, I typed every letter in that. And uh, because I want to reach people for Jesus Christ. And we've done that in many, many, many languages. Probably over 50 now. I don't, I don't even know. But Chicago is the largest Lithuanian city in the world. Second largest Polish city. Third largest Greek city. Fourth largest Yugoslavian city. It is now the largest Assyrian city in the world. We have more Assyrians in Chicago that are in Baghdad, Iraq. My track rack on the back. This is our old storefront. We got kicked out of that one and. So we're in a new one now, but uh, we had our, our tracks in alphabetical order. So it, it went from Amharic to Zulu, and uh, our Albanian or, or Armenian, which, whichever one came first. I don't know which one. And, and uh, that, that's your job. My job is just to tell you about it. Amen? And, uh, but we started translating gospel tracks into different languages, Hmong, German, Thai, Nur, Tagalog, Fante, Swedish, Polish, Farsi, Portuguese, Bosnian, Arabic, Chinese, Croatian, Dari, Dinka, Greek. Uh, the Dinka language, there were four letters we could not type. We had to make them in graphics and put them in to insert it. But we learned how to do it. Now we can type them. Praise the Lord. Spanish, Thai. You know, the world is coming to Chicago. I think we have over 150 different language gospel tracts now. We have Bibles in, I, I don't know, 60 or 70 languages. Uh, you're, you're talking about uh, 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 the, the, the country of Ghana. We have Chi, we have Fante, we have Gan, we have Isako. Uh, and then Nigeria, we have Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, Ethic, Bibles. Uh, we got Bibles in all those languages. Why? Because we want to reach those people for Jesus Christ. You know, don't tell me you can't do it. Tell me it's hard. Tell me that, that, that it's difficult. But don't tell me you can't do it because we've done it. Glory to God. Amen. And uh, then we also go to the parades. We have Chinese parade, Assyrian parade, Greek parade, Polish parade, uh, uh, Italian parade, German parade, uh, Ukrainian festival, Romanian festival, Korean festival. And, and we take gospel tracts to all these different parades. This is the German parade, uh, Central American parade, which includes all the, all the countries between uh, uh, Venezuela and, and uh, Chicago, or, or Chicago, America. Puerto Rican parade, Spanish and English, Mexican parade. We have five, no, we have six different Mexican parades now in Chicago. India parade. Now the Indian, uh, 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 when we go to the Indian parade, uh, Indians don't speak the same language. There's all, all kinds of tribes just like you have in Burma. And so we thought we'll get some of the major ones. So we, we have tracks in Hindi, Urdu, Gujarati, Malayalam, Tamil, Telugu, Punjabi, Nepali, Bengali, Bengali Marathi, and English. And we put them all together. And, and uh, we, we, because when you get in the crowd, there's so many people and they're moving. By the time you say, what language do you speak? Man, they're, they're already two blocks down the street. And uh, so we thought, you know, uh, if there's a will, there's a way. And so we, we handed them all out. Now, you got to remember, when you print 3,000 tracks, 3,000 times 11. And uh, so it gets to be a lot. You know, uh, uh, but, so, but, the, but, you know, uh, what, what, what are we required to do? More of it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So we do what we can. We've heard that so eloquently this week already. Uh, she did what she could, and that's what we do. We do what we can. 
And uh, uh, so uh, anyway, we're hand out the tracks. Well, man, the, the, the street is carpeted with tracks. And you say they threw them down. Yes, they did. And then one time we had a missionary come during the time of the Indian parade. If you come to our church, whatever we're doing, you do it with us. And, and uh, so uh, uh, he started checking and he picked them up. And there were only eight tracks in the packs. They had taken English, they had taken Hindi, the national language, and they had taken their tribal language. They were getting red. And then on top of it, people could still pick up the other ones. And so God, God is good. Irish parade, a Syrian parade, we use a Syrian English and Arabic uh, for that parade. Day of the Little Children parade, Greek parade, uh, Fifth of May parade, Polish parade, uh, Pakistani parade, we use Urdu and English for that parade, Korean festival, Hmong festival, Italian parade, and uh, we did some different Hmong tracks. Uh, then uh, people started coming from all kinds of different countries. We did some in, in Karini. You guys recommend, the, you noticed the one on the upper, upper left there. And then uh, um, uh, Karini in the middle there, and then Gujarati and, and Aromo and Karen, and uh, then, you know, we thought about Buddhist monks. You know, they're, they're not going to come to church, so why don't we just go to the Buddhist temple? And so we started doing that. And so this is the Vietnamese Buddhist temple, Japanese Buddhist temple, Thai Buddhist temple. Uh, can you imagine that's one word? <laughs> it's a long word. <laughs> and and uh, But uh, inside, uh, the youth group that you see here is Brother Jimmy Love's youth group from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, they came up and, and we got, we got, uh, uh, we made track packs for them, 70, 72 languages. And we went out on the street and I think that week we got out about 56 or 58 languages. I don't, I don't recall now. And uh, uh, the most we ever got out was with uh, Brother Pat Briney and his group. Uh, we got, uh, uh, when, the, when they came, they wanted to, they, they, everybody in the group picked somebody they wanted to give a gospel track to. And so on Thursday, I asked them, I said, have you accomplished your goal? And they said, no, we haven't met any Kurdish people. I said, you've got to be kidding. I said, I know you have met at least 20 or 30 Kurdish people already. I said, I w uh, we're going to go back today to an area. And I said, when you see somebody, if they look like an Arab, ask them, are they Kurdish? The first person they talked to was Kurdish. And so God allowed them to give out gospel literature in every language that they wanted to meet that week. What, what an awesome thing. Uh, this is a Cambodian Buddhist temple. Uh, a couple of monks here. The one on the front is uh, 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 Sambat, uh, older monk, 77 years old at that time. And then the younger one in the back is Uk. Now, Uk, uh, I, I, many, 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 many times I witnessed to Uk. And, and Uk said, you mean that book has an answer to every question? I said, yes. I don't know them all. I'm still learning. I said, but it has an answer to every question. And, and he said, the blood of Jesus, does it fall from the sky and cleanse you? I said, no, you're looking at it with the skin eye. You got to look at it with the heart eye. And, and uh, I said, you know, that's what it means to be born again spiritually. And uh, so then Uk moved to California, and I often think of him, and I wonder what in the world happened to him. That's Pastor John Carlisle there uh, with us. Uh, the monk on the left, Cessna, uh, he even came to our church services before. And then here is a Karen family. This Karen family were all Buddhist, and they said, how do we join the Christians? I said, you, you don't join the Christians. You must be born again. And that was my wife, Savari, in the red there. And my wife was from Cambodia. Uh, if you go on our webpage, you can read her story out of the mouth of a dragon. And it tells how she went through the killing fields of Cambodia and never heard the name of Jesus Christ ever in her life. And how in the refugee camp, she heard about a God that loved her and a God who, if she opened the door of her heart, he would allow her to come in. And she trusted him as her Lord and Savior. And she started praying uh, that, that she would go to the church of the people who first talked to her. 
She came on December the 22nd, 1980. On December the 29th, 1980, I knocked on the door of an apartment that she was visiting and uh, met her. And uh, she asked what we we're doing. We said going around visiting people. We had Laotians with us, Vietnamese with us, Thai with us, uh, Hmong with us, but we didn't have a Cambodian. And so she went with us to be an interpreter for us. And uh, three and a half years later, she married me. We had nine children, God blessed, uh, one's in heaven. And eight of them are scattered all over America from Alaska to Hawaii to South Carolina. And uh, nobody wanted to stay in Chicago. I wonder why. <laughs> uh, Mickey. Mickey is from Thailand. Mickey's family is very rich people. You know, they're, uh, she's from Mahasarikam. Uh, matter of fact, I, I have opportunities to lecture for the University of Mahasarikam now some. Uh, we do that through Zoom, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to going and being at the university and, and uh, praying for the uh, professor over that department that she comes to know Jesus Christ as her Savior. But Mickey came to America, and, and uh, she was going to get a degree in computer and engineering at the University of Illinois. And uh, we met Mickey, and the first time we met Mickey, I, I told her, I said, God is light. And she goes, light, light, light. Light's energy. Energy produces heat. Is God hot? And I thought, nobody ever asked me that before. But yeah, our God's a consuming fire. He shall judge our work, yet so is by fire. The Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus saw a light brighter than the noonday sun. That's hot. I said, God's hot. I said, I didn't know that. I do now. <laughs> and uh, she goes, wow. She says, my professors can't answer my questions. The Buddhist monks can't answer my questions. My parents can't answer my questions. Uh, she said, uh, uh, the Bible can't. I said, write them down. Bring them to church. And so for the next eight months, we had so much fun answering question after question after question until she got saved. Now she got saved, she's got her own answers. She went back to Thailand. Her, her, her father hired uh, uh, a Buddhist monk and a psychologist to try to convert her back to Buddhism. And she took the Bible and she set the Bible down in front of them and she said, ask any question you want. Whatever question they asked, she answered it with the Bible. The monk went to her father and says, leave her alone. Let her be a Christian. She knows that book too well. There's nothing you can do. And uh, I thought, praise the Lord. <laughs> God is so good. Man, she got in church. She's on fire for the Lord. Uh, uh, all, all of the, all the Burmese people know her e everywhere. She was right there with me and, and, and learning how to, how to re read the different Bibles and, and, and talk to the people and bring them to church. And, and her husband just kind of tagged along. <laughs> but Muslim ministry. All right, if we can do that with the Buddhists, why can't we do it with the Muslims? You know, we have, uh, Muslims speak all kinds of different languages. Uh, if you, uh, we're, we're no longer at any of those church po points that we're at. If you look at the black church in the green dot, we're in the middle. We're somewhere in the middle between those two M's there. All those M's represent Muslim mosques. If I had to plot that chart today, that thing's probably seven or eight years old. If I had to ch plot that today, uh, there would be three times more mosques than that. And, uh, but, you know, having opportunities to go in the mosque, this is a Methodist church that became a Muslim mosque. Uh, inside of the mosque here, uh, here's a Muslim, uh, speaks Pashto and Persian. Uh, and then uh, this uh, uh, Muslim mosque has been in Chicago since 1965. This is the inside of the mosque. Every Friday there are about 900 people in, in that mosque. And they have to teach in English because there's so many different languages. You know, they, they have the same problem we do. You know, so they use English as the medium. And, and uh, so I, I carry my track bag. I have 110 languages in my track bag. So, man, I'm loaded for bear. I, I, I've got them. You know, if, if, if they're there, I've got a gospel track for them. And if, if I don't, I'll have one next week. And uh, because we're going to reach them for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? That's what we're supposed to do. Uh, Mr. Khan in the front is, is the, uh, the head of the, the, that particular mosque, and I've spent hours and hours and hours with him sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then, of course, we translated gospel tracts into Arabic and then uh, different languages for the different Muslims from 
uh, Persia and Dari and Pashto and other, other languages. Uh, John and Romans in, in Arabic, uh, different Bibles in, in different languages there. Uh, Mrs. Najir. Mrs. Najir lived in Dallas, Texas for seven years. And then she moved to Chicago. Three times Christian people witnessed to her or she came in contact with Christian people three times. All three times were from our little bitty storefront. And, and uh, so she came into our church and heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and she got saved. Her daughter Aziza began coming to church. I, I, don't, I don't have a, I, I take the picture out of Aziza because I don't have room for him. And, and, uh, but Aziza got saved. And then uh, Nizer Zayed, her husband, and then, you know, the Zayed family, the, the food, if you ever eat hummus, you know, you, you, you probably bought Zayed hummus. And, uh, but their family, they're multimillionaires. And so uh, uh, Nizer uh, trusted Christ. Then they had uh, Abraham and Salome, or Ibrahim and Salome. And, and uh, now they've trusted Christ. Three generations of people saved out of, out of Islam. Glory to God. And then uh, Amaya Abed, the gentleman on the left, uh, the last time I saw him, I spent about three and a half hours in his apartment sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with him. Noah George in the middle there is at a Plaque Road Baptist Church in North Pole, Alaska. Uh, uh, Brother Humphrey called me up and he said, I want, him, I want Noah to come to Chicago for about six weeks before he ever went to the Middle East. And uh, so uh, I told Noah, we're going to go into the mosque. We're going to visit uh, stores and stuff. He said, you can't do that. I said, you just come with me and watch. I'll show you how to do it. And uh, so we did. And, and uh, oh, man, Noah ate that up like, like hot cream and biscuits. I mean, you know, he, he, was, he was all excited about that. And, and uh, you know, then next thing you know, man, we're, we're witnessing to people everywhere, all over the place. And we had a wonderful time with Noah and now he's been in the Middle East, what, 12, 15 years now, uh, serving the Lord there, and, and I thank God for him. Uh, you know, uh, where there's no vision, the people perish. You know, we, we need to have a vision. You know, can we do it? The, is the work too big? Is it impossible to reach so many tribes at one time? Do you have the education? You know, where's the example to do it? The answer is no, 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 no. You, you can't do it. It's impossible. You know, uh, uh, there's no way. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be what? Witnesses. God just told us to witness. I can't help it because they don't speak English. It's not my fault. I didn't make them that way. But I do know this. The Bible says preach the gospel to every creature. So that means we ought to reach everybody. It doesn't matter who they are and tell them about Jesus Christ. Now, uh, we... we uh, my slides are out of, I'm just going. All right, the, the, uh, the largest group of people that are uh, from Myanmar in, in America are the Ska Karen. This is Tai Klu Po in, in uh, February of 2008. I mean, he's out in the jungle. He's in this jungle house. There's no electricity. There's no running water. There's no, no modern convenience. Whatever you see in the jungle is what you eat. And two weeks later, they're in Chicago. What a transformation. Unbelievable. And, and uh, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they got here and immediately we started uh, uh, finding Bibles and tracts and we started printing songs and working. And then uh, a lot of people, Karini are in this group, by the way, too. You just can't see them. And, uh, but we have uh, several Karini that, that, that are, are in this group. Then we started translating gospel tracts in Tadim and Mizo and Hakka and Flam and Saizang and Zotang and, and uh, 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 Kachin and Shan and Man and, and, and just so, so many different languages. And, and then, you know, people came to church and not everybody speaks the same language. So we had interpreters. And then it got to the point where <coughs> we had seven or eight interpreters in a service. So, I mean, you know, a 30-minute service ends up being four and a half hours long. All right, this isn't going to work. You know, we got to find something. What, what can we do? So I was in a second-hand store, and, and uh, uh, I was in there, and I, and I listened to some people speaking Gujarati, and I, I heard some people speaking Bosnian, and then I, I heard some people speaking Spanish. Then, 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 then I, I, I heard... Uh, uh, somewhere over like three or four aisles over, 
I heard English, and it was as clear as day. And I said, that's the answer. And so I went back, went back to church, and I told everybody, I said, you know what? I've got a solution. I'm going to speak in English, and you all interpret at the same time. You said, Pastor, that'll be confusion. No, it's controlled chaos. <laughs> and and uh, so <laughs> that's what we did. And it worked out great. Everybody heard in his own language. You ever read that before? <laughs> and so uh, we, when we got kicked out of our storefront, we went to a park district. We, we couldn't meet at nighttime because they, they, they were closed. So we started having services at nighttime in, in apartment buildings. We, we did uh, our, all of our Bible verses and stuff for Sunday. We did it in Koran in English, uh, Burmese in English, uh, Tadim in English, uh, 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 Swahili in English, and, and Hindi in English, and, and, and just all, all kinds of different languages, whoever came to church. And uh, because we wanted to reach these people for Jesus Christ. And, you know, uh, I didn't know it, but God had a plan to send me to Asia. And so on October the 3rd, uh, first 2018. Well, let me back up for a minute. Uh, my wife died in 2017. But before my wife died, I turned as yellow as a banana. My wife says, what's wrong with you? You're turning Vietnamese? And of course, you know, if you know anything about Cambodia, uh, the, the worst thing you could be is Vietnamese. <laughs> and uh, so it was a derogatory statement. And I said, I don't know, maybe, you know. And, and uh, but uh, I was going into liver failure. My, my body uh, had attacked my liver and, and literally killed it in just a few months. Just a few months. I mean, uh, when, when they called me to tell me to go to the hospital, I was out in the snow splitting wood with my wood splitter. And they called me and they said, we don't know what you're doing or where you're at, but we, you, you need to go to the hospital now. And we don't mean an hour from now. And in three days, I was in a coma because I was just so toxic. And so they got me to Loyola University Medical Center. And on uh, April the 1st, 2017, uh, they said, there's nothing we can do. He's got 30 days to live. He's going to die. On the 17th, they, they never put me on transplant list or anything. On the 17th, my wife said a little short, four foot tall Chinese lady walked in the door. She said, that woman's hand was the size of three of my fingers. And she said, that's so she can reach inside of you and fix everything, you know. And uh, sounds good to me. And, and uh, so, but uh, anyway, the woman told her, she says, I'm going to take your husband out and save his life. And she gave me a transplant. And uh, man, it took a while to recover. And then soon after, I uh, got out and my wife and I had honeymoon time. And uh, uh, then, then she went to heaven. And so I sit around and I just, I cried and cried. And, uh, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, my ministry's over. And then I began getting call after call after call. Over, over 50 Burmese people came to my wife's funeral, and it was in Holland, Michigan. Some of them drove as far as Omaha, Nebraska, to Holland, Michigan for the funeral. And uh, I didn't know any of them were coming. I didn't know anybody was coming. And, and uh, so uh, 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 when, when um, they started calling, they said, Dad, we miss Mom. Why don't you come and visit us? And I thought, you know, we, we have church on Sunday and Friday for midweek. Why not? I got the whole week. I can do it. So I started driving to St. Paul, Minnesota and, and, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin and Omaha, Nebraska and Des Moines, Iowa and, and Rock Island, Illinois and, and Rockford, Illinois. And, and people started getting saved. And then they said, you know, our, our pastor is uh, in a refugee camp. He wants to talk to you. Uh, my teacher at the uh, uh, Bible college, they, they, he wants to talk to you. And uh, then, you know, my, my, my relatives are in Burma. You know, they're, uh, uh, they're in this place or that place. And next thing you know, I, I, you know I, I was messaging and talking to people all over Thailand and Myanmar. And then a professor in Yangon called me 
and he said, uh, we want you to come. And, and we want you to preach the graduation of our, our school. And I said, I, I can't do that. I've, n I've never been anywhere in the world. I mean, I've been everywhere in the world, but it's always been in Chicago. And, and uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I've, eat, I've eaten every kind of food you can think of. I have no idea what it was. I just said it just looks like chicken, smells like chicken, tastes like chicken, and tried to not think that it might be monkey brains or something like that, you know. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, but, but, but anyway, um, uh, I, I said, if I do that, then I'm going to go to Cambodia and see where my wife grew up and, and all of that. And they, they said, okay. And so then I thought, oh, I need interpreters. A, a missionary in Bangkok called me, and he said, if you come to Thailand, I'll drive you anywhere in Thailand. Pakawa said, you can come and stay at our house, and we'll drive you to the refugee camps. A uh, missionary in, in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, called me, and he said, uh, who's going to go and interpret for you? And I said, nobody. And he said, I'll do it. And he said, uh, we have 19 Filipino missionaries in Phnom Penh, I want you to train them also and teach them while you're here. And I said, okay. I bought a plane ticket for $536 round trip. And uh, from Chicago to Bangkok, from Bangkok to Chicago. My first trip was 69 days. Now, I'm, that, that, that's a year and a half out of my transplant. I, about a year out of, out, out of my transplant, I went to my doc and I said, Doc, I said, I, I need to um, go to Thailand, Cambodia, and Myanmar on a mission trip. Can I go? And he looked at me, <laughs> he shook his head, and he says, anybody else? No, but you can go. You can't die. I said, not true. I can die. I said, man, I'm, I'm, I'm flesh. Look at me. And I said, uh, how did I get transplanted? He said, you didn't, you died. I said, not true. That's not true. I said, uh, 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 okay, I, I want to see the paper, the doctor's signature, and the permission that I got the transplant. And he said, there isn't one. It doesn't exist. You got the transplant, but there's no record. He said, in the history of Loyola University Medical Center, there's never been a transplant in 17 days. God worked a miracle. And so, anyway, I prepared to go. And so I got on the plane on October the 1st, and, and away I went. So that was me uh, in, in the hospital with my oldest son, Job, uh, right, right, and this is my wife here. And, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, we started, um, you know, the, 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 my, my heart was on fire. I wanted to serve the Lord. And, and, and uh, so then, you know, God opened up schools, churches, universities, Bible colleges, seminaries, uh, villages. Uh, when I went, uh, there, you can see me there in the middle with my, my hat. Uh, this is a, uh, a, a public school in Burma. I just showed up, and that, that's only one-fourth of it. I mean, this thing goes all the way around, and there's just people everywhere. So we, we went all over the place, and, and, and uh, then I began finding out that pastors had no idea about Baptist history and Baptist distinctives. And I mean, there's, there's 91 Baptist seminaries in Myanmar. There's over 4 million Baptist people in Burma. Burma is the second largest Baptist country in the world. And all because one missionary in 1813 went. One man, one man went. You know, one man made a difference. He changed that country forever, forever. And uh, so uh, uh, there's my wife and I, and of course our trail of blood on, on the map and in, in the back of our church, and we've, we've expanded it and added other other churches and denominations and stuff so people can see that Baptists are very, very different than Catholics and all the Protestants. And I began asking questions, you know, John the Baptist, Old Testament or New Testament? Old Testament. You know, where, where did the New Testament start when Jesus died? Uh, uh, John's baptism, Jesus' baptism, same or different? Different. They were all wrong. They were wrong, 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 wrong. I said, you're not Baptists, you're Protestants. You don't even know what you believe. And so I began teaching them. And pastors began to listen. Uh, this is a Malai, uh, uh, This is the ba uh, Bible College and, and Malai refugee camp. There's 34,500 people in this refugee camp. I mean, man, that's a city. Unbelievable. 
And I had an opportunity to go there, got my Karen shirt on. They had to put two shirts together for me to fit it. <laughs> so uh, I'm, 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 I'm double strength, amen. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, we, we went there, we had an opportunity to preach to the students, and then we went to another Bible college, and I had a chance to preach to those students, another Bible college here. Uh, this is an opium refugee camp. Opium has 13,500 people in it. Uh, this was Kala Junior College. I had a chance to preach there and, and, and uh, be with the students there and, and spend time with them. This is the elders of the camp. I had opportunity to share with them. And uh, then we found out that 37 of the Bible College students didn't have Bibles, so we got Bibles for the students. Uh, this is at Nopo Refugee Camp. Uh, this is Hillite Theological Seminary. Uh, uh, this is Antioch uh, Bible College in, in Yangon. Um, <clears throat> uh, we have a man in our church. His, his name is uh, uh, Sadawa. And Sadawa says, uh, Dad, my, my, my uh, brother and sister are in the Bible College in Yangon. And so I went to Corinne Cthulhu Baptist Bible College and School, and I met his brother and sister there. Had an opportunity to uh, meet a lot of the students there. Uh, their, uh, you know, uh, graduation. Uh, this is a house church. Uh, this, the, no, no, no. This, this is a dump church. The people live in in the garbage dump. These are the people you see with the tin roofs and the cardboard, and uh, uh, they they meet in an apartment building on the fifth floor of this this apartment building, and Yuzana Garden in Yangon. And uh, I, I got down, I sit down with them, uh, uh, you know, you know, sit where they sat, and why not? And this is some of the Bible college students there, uh, village near Tangu, uh, uh, had opportunities to preach and teach to so, so many people. And, and, and you know, God touched my heart. Uh, uh, I want to I share, I don't know where, where, I'm, where I'm, which, there we go. Uh, Zomi people in 1949 had never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were naked savages in 1949. And a missionary, an American missionary, went there and preached the gospel. And they got saved. And they established that church. That's the first Zomi church ever. And I had an opportunity to preach in that church. And I thought it was such a blessing. You know, God was really good. This looks like it's going backwards now. So I'm just going to reverse it and see if it goes the other way and it'll work. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, we had opportunities. Uh, I don't know which way this is going now. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you, you, you get the picture. The whole, whole idea um, is that people wanted to hear. And then this Protestant guy in the white shirt, uh, he told me, he said, uh, Pastor, he said, are you going to be in... Um, Yangon on uh, 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 November the 22nd, and I said, or, or 26th or something, I can't remember now, whatever Thanksgiving Day was, and I said, no, um, I'm leaving. He said, if you stay, you can preach to 50 pastors, and I said, I'm staying, and so I went, and I preached, and I don't think he'll ever let me back again. <laughs> Our doctrine didn't agree, uh, but he gave me an idea. Why don't I have our own pastor's conference? Why don't we just get, get together as many pastors from all over Myanmar, doesn't matter what tribe they are, doesn't matter who they are, let's get them together, we'll house them, we'll feed them, and we'll train them Baptist doctrine. And so we, we endeavored to do that. And uh, some of these pastors asked me to come and so we got, we got all excited about it. We translated the Trail of Blood into Burmese. We went to Baptist Press in Yangon, and we had it a 1,000 copies printed. And uh, we gave those copies out already, and so now we printed another 1,500 copies. And uh, so we're, we're ready to uh, uh, get those. Uh, Gaku, the guy uh, in the yellow shirt there, was my driver. We rented our own car. And we just drove all over the country preaching and teaching. And, and uh, uh, Gaku is, is, is asking so many questions about the Trail of Blood and stuff. And he said, I want you to make a new map and put all the churches on it. And I said, man, there's over 100 denominations now. And uh, so, 
but but anyway uh you know these people were so open we we made the trail of blood in and in, in four four foot by six foot banner and we'd hang it on the wall and began teaching the pastors and and sharing uh, with them uh, Baptist doctrine, uh, Baptist teaching, and they, they got so excited. Uh, uh, then um, you know, we had, uh, I want to stop uh, at the, where, 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 where? Uh, this thing jumps. But, but anyway, uh, we, there's one pastor that came to America as a refugee. He came to North Carolina. He got saved. He got trained. And now he has gone back to Burma as a missionary to his own people. And uh, I've got his picture in here somewhere. Maybe it'll come up. Saul Titus here is in insane Myanmar. He, he's a Baptist pastor. And he told me, he said, why, why didn't we know this? Why haven't we been taught this? You know, we, our whole lifetime, we've never heard about the history of Baptist. And he said, we need to teach other men this. He said, I want you to, he's a pastor, I want you to take the time to teach me so that I can teach other men. I said, I'll take all the time I need. So I taught him, I gave him uh, 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 one of the, the, the Trail of Blood posters. We gave him a bunch of uh, the books. And so now he is teaching other people Baptist history. Uh, and then uh, this is a poker in a Baptist pastor. He, they have the poker in Baptist Theological Seminary in, in Patane. And uh, he said, I want you to go to the head uh, a professor of the poker in Baptist Theological Seminary in Yangon. It's about an eight block by eight block compound downtown Yangon. They had a, they had a church building there from the 1850s. That, that was built. I mean, massive, massive Baptist church. And then, of course, modern buildings and stuff. And the professor said he would give me 30 minutes. He gave me four hours. And I had an opportunity to explain. And he said, I believe everything except for, I believe we have to control the churches. And I said, wrong. You can't control the churches. Churches are always independent. Church is an autonomous organization. It, it, it is to stand alone with the pastors and the deacons and the church members. They, they, together, corporately, they, they make the decisions in that church. And uh, he, he said, but if we, if we do that, then th they may change and become other kind of churches. I said, then that's between them and God. Our job is to be faithful to the New Testament pattern. And uh, so, but he said, I want to get all 91 of the, the seminary heads together, and I want you to teach the trail of blood to them. I said, anytime, anywhere, you, you let me know, and I'll, I'll go back. I'll do it. And uh, so pray, pray for that and, and the opportunities to, to do that. Uh, you know, I, I just really thank God for my opportunities to be there. This is a Thai pastor. I was back in Thailand, and I met him, and uh, uh, I began to teach him. He said, I, I went to a Filipino Bible college in the Philippines, an independent Baptist college. And he said, I didn't learn this. Why didn't I learn this? He said, I've been taught universal church and, and, and uh, all of these things, and, and I haven't been taught Baptist history. And so we got the trail of blood in Thai, and, and I taught him. And he said, I want you to stay for several days. So I, I stayed at, at his uh, uh, church property for several days and, and taught him. And uh, so, but what, the, what opportunities? God just opened up so many opportunities. And while I was there, I met a, 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 a teacher at one of the colleges, uh, Rosalind Chung Po. And uh, Rosalind uh, is, was born on the Thai-Burma border. Her mother was a tribal Thai. Her father was uh, uh, Burmese. A and uh, 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 she uh, didn't have any kind of ID whatsoever, but she loved the Lord. She'd gotten saved. She was faithful in the church. She was faithful teaching the students, uh, her students all over the place. And and uh, so anyway, we, we fell, we, I fell in love with her, and I feel God wants us to marry. 
Uh, this is Brother Jason Sumatra, also out of our church in Rogers. And Brother Sumatra, Mrs. Sumatra, uh, uh, Rose is now a member of the church there and, and faithfully serving the Lord there. And, and uh, so we had a wonderful time uh, there with the Sumatras. Uh, this is a Golden Triangle area where Burma, Laos, and, and Thailand meet. And uh, so uh, I thank God for, for that. Uh, uh, God is just blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed. And that's, an, that's enough slides. Um, uh, I, I don't know where we are on time. I don't know when I'm supposed to stop. We don't want you to stop. <laughs> well, I understand that, but <laughs> time restraint. We want to ask you maybe a question or two. Oh, yes, sir. Recommend something, Pastor. You're the pastor here, and I'm not. But I know you've been, I know you've been talking about, about uh, supporting this man. Yes. And I would recommend that we do it. We just have a little time right here, and if you want to entertain a little business meeting, I'd recommend that we begin monthly support our brother Edward Fort in a hundred dollars a month. <laughs> uh, we we as a uh, mission. Uh, committee, we have already kind of looked over his information, and uh, those men, most of those guys are in here, and uh, and we're missing a couple, but that's okay. And uh, that is our uh, uh, recommendation, and I've got a motion, and I have a second, and uh, do we have any discussion? Come on now, here's your chance. Just because he's here doesn't mean you can't ask questions. All in favor? Say aye. There you go. And opposed by like sign. Motion carries. Hey, I think you're our missionary, brother. Amen. Yeah. You Thank you. Praise the Lord. And, uh, yeah. Brother Darren, I'm going to make another recommendation that you men on the missions committee consider what this man's doing. As I've listened to Brother Ford again, I'm just humbled. You know, I, I mean, that a man would be used of God in such a great, grand way, uh, in a way that most of us think is impossible. I'm just ashamed of myself uh, at how limited my own vision is. And, you know, I, I heard him talk over at Garland this past summer. I've realized this church needs to get a little feel. I don't need to tell them as best I could this information. They need to hear it. I mean, this man's infectious, I'll tell you. And he moves me and he makes me to tears as I realize how poorly I've served the Lord and how little vision I've had. And, and we're in Houston, Texas, and I think it's just about, if not as international as Chicago is. Everywhere you look, there are communities of Korean people and Pakistani people, and they're all over this town, and yet we don't have one track in Arabic or in any other language to give anybody. We, I need to spend personally a while with this man to learn how to do it, and you do too, Pastor. And, and by the grace of God, we're going to do a better job here. So I'm just going to warn you up front, church. Uh, this got to be a part of us. We got to start doing here in Houston what we can do. After you want to ask, I don't know what to ask. <laughs> I don't feel like we have enough time to hear it all. I have a question. I mean, yeah. Brother has given us tons of information and uh, about his ministry over the past few decades. And uh, does anybody have a question about his work, about what he's been doing, or how he does it? Brother Richard. Absolutely. 
Who's that? Sumatras. They're not missionaries. Uh, the Sumatras are missionaries. Oh, they are. Um, uh, they, the, uh, Pastor Sumatra is out of Rogers Baptist as a missionary. Uh, they are Filipino. Uh, he was won to the Lord by Joe Mandrino in Macau yeah. years ago. And then he was trained by Brother Madrino. And they, they went back to the Philippines and started several churches. I'm, I'm thinking three, but I'm not 100% positive. Pastor will know. And uh, then one of the churches he turned over to his son. And then they went to Thailand. They were in the south part of Thailand, which is uh, Patani Thai area, and it's all Muslim. And uh, they had an opportunity to go to Chiang Mai. And so they've gone to Chiang Mai. This group you see in the picture right there is their church. This is their second anniversary of them in Chiang Mai. And it's uh, Life International yes, Baptist Church? Yes, they've just, they've just celebrated their fourth year together. Okay. Yeah. That's so the point, is it not true that the indigenous churches in the Philippines are themselves sending missionaries to Asia and other parts of the world? Well, he's the example. He is from the Philippines, and now here, here he is in, in Thailand. But yes, there, there, were, there, are, uh, there are many uh, uh, Filipino missionaries there in in Thailand, there are uh, many missionaries in, in Cambodia, and uh, they are now trying to begin to get into Myanmar. Myanmar is a lot more difficult to get into. And there are some indigenous churches out of the Philippines, is that correct? That is correct. Brother Ford, how is your health now? I know God's keeping you alive, it's obvious, but uh, how are you feeling? Um, well, I've got, I've got knee issues. I've got to do a knee transplant. Um, and uh, I've always had teeth issues. Uh, so I was doing some dental work in Thailand before the COVID hit, and so I'm in the middle of, uh, I've, I've got a lot of dental things I need to do. And, uh, but as far as my liver, my liver's doing fine, praise the Lord. My anti-rejection medicine does some damage to my kidneys, so I have some issues with that, and then issues with, um, uh, uh, you know, in the mornings I have to be careful with my food, what I eat and, and stuff, but uh, the rest of the day I'm fine. And, um, uh, you know, other than that, I just have my, minor issues. God, God's good. And, uh, you know, I, I may be slower, but there's a lot of things you can do even slow. <laughs> so I, I've learned to be a slow fast. <laughs> or fast slow <laughs> do you know folks most people with issues this man's had would drag up and say it's over for me yeah. I've said before and I'm going to keep saying don't die until you die keep on living till you die give it all when you're crossing that finish line be a sprint don't be crawling along praise God for this man anybody else in here have a comment or a question yes I don't know. I have so much fun, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've taken it this way. You know, for instance, uh, I, when... You know, the Muslims like to say, well, you know, uh, you, you know what I hate about Americans and, and, and I hate about Christians? You, you, that, that, that Bible, that, that, that Bible, it, it talks about all of the bad things on the prophets. I said, yes, it does. Of course it does. And they said, that's bad. I said, no, that's good. I said, because if, if Noah can get drunk and Abraham can lie yeah. and, and, and David can commit adultery... And, and Peter can curse and deny the Lord. And, and they ask genuine forgiveness, genuine repentance, and God will forgive them, and they can go on and serve God. There's hope for me. I said, man, that, that's not a detriment. That's an asset. And, and then they say, oh, you know, we, 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 we hate the Bible. 
And I said, why do you hate the Bible? Because you can do anything and be forgiven. I said, wrong. You can do anything, repent, and be forgiven. And, and I said, the key is repentance. I said, you as a Muslim, if you kill a Muslim, then you can never go to heaven. You can never go to heaven. You can never have forgiveness. I said, what if you genuinely repent? From the depth of your heart, you repent. You really are sorry you did it, and you turn from your sin. Don't you want God to forgive you? Man, it's in the heart of every one of them for forgiveness. That's what they're living for. And I never have anybody argue. Never have them argue with it. Uh, I, I shared, um, uh, uh, I was in a Muslim mosque one day. I, I shared this with you the other day. A and uh, uh, it was the, the end of Ishmael. It was the time when Abraham sacrificed his son Ishmael. The Bible says it was Isaac. And uh, so, man, I listened and I listened and I listened. And I thought, man, these people are so, so messed up. And uh, at the same time, I'm thinking, how am I going to answer? How am I going to answer? How am I going to answer? And so uh, when they finished telling me their rendition, I said, nope, that's wrong. It was Isaac, not Ishmael. All right, now... That's a Bible versus Quran issue. They don't believe the Bible. We don't believe the Quran. So it's your opinion versus my opinion. All right? The Bible has an answer to everything. So I thought and thought and thought, and I said, Galatians chapter 4. Agar and Sarah. Okay? The bondwoman, the free woman. Sarah couldn't have a child. So she told Abraham, marry Hagar. Hagar was a contractual wife. She was hired to have a baby. That was her job. Who was the baby for? Answer me. Who was the baby for? <laughs> Abraham. Sarah. It's Abraham. I, 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 told, I, I told them the same thing, and they answered, Sarah. Mm -hmm. I said, but now Sarah has a baby 13 years later. Okay? This is the child of promise. God promised this child. He didn't promise Ishmael. He promised Isaac. They know that. Abraham is a Muslim prophet. Noah is a Muslim prophet. Jeremiah is a Muslim prophet. David's a Muslim prophet. They messed themselves up by picking the wrong prophets. <laughs> and and uh, I, I, I said, uh, when, when Sarah had a baby, Sarah is the first wife. First wife, but second child. But this is the wife that, that, that is the freeborn wife. Hagar is a contractual wife. Second wife, but first son. Which one reigns? The freeborn's child is going to reign. Nobody argued with me. Nobody. But now, see, we got to bring it back to the gospel because otherwise it, it's useless. Yeah. So how are we going to bring it back to the gospel? Story's not about Abraham. Story's not about Sarah. Story's not about Hagar. Story's not about Ishmael. The story's not about Isaac. It's about that lamb. Yes. Over in the bush. See, God took that lamb or that ram and substituted that ram for that son. 4,000 years later, John the Baptist, 2,000 years later, John the Baptist is standing in the Jordan River. And he looks up and he says, Behold! The Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And one of those Muslims said, The Bible doesn't say that. I reached out of my track bag, pulled my Bible out, flipped it to John 129, stuck it in his face, and I said, You read it. And we're out in the vestibule of the Muslim mosque. There are about 
15 or 20 Muslims gathered around, and he's reading John 1, 29 from the Word of God in the Muslim mosque. Only God can do that. Yeah. Only God can do that. And, and that's what it's about, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to a people that have never heard. And we're unique in this country. Yes, sir. You can't go into Pakistan. You can't go into Iraq and do that. But we're in America, and you can go in there, and they speak English, and you can talk to them, and they can't do anything about it. It's fear that keeps us. It's ignorance that keeps us quiet most of the time. And we don't think we can do it. You're hearing that can be done. Whether you go to a Buddhist temple or Muslim mosque or, or Sikh temple or Hindu temple, you know, uh, I never lie to them. I never cover up. I tell them I am a Bible-believing Baptist. I, 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 I love the Lord. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I never hide it, even the Jews. I never hide it from them because I don't like that. I like honesty. And, and uh, you know, it's rough in the beginning because the, the, the sandpaper, you know, it's confrontational. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm willing to listen to anything they say. They can give me any kind of literature they want to give me. But I've got my Bible. You know, when, when I've got the Word of God, it doesn't matter what they say. I've got an answer. I'm not afraid of their answers. I'm not afraid of what they've got to say. And so I listen, and I go back the second time. And I go back the third time. Then they get familiar with me a little bit. And then by the fourth time, sometimes even quicker than that, they begin asking questions. That, that, that Muslim cleric that I showed you, the, the, the old man in the white sheet with the white beard and stuff, uh, one day we were sitting at the table talking. We were drinking, we were drinking coffee. And we were talking, and a, he, he's Pakistani, so he, he reads Urdu, reads and speaks Urdu. A, a, a Palestinian Muslim young man, an Arab, came in and sat down and listened a little bit. And then he goes, I have a question. And, and uh, he said, you know, the idea of Jesus Christ being the Son of God, he said, that's believable. He said, I've got Christian friends. Now, he means Maronite Catholics, the Arab, Arab Catholics. And, and uh, he said, they, they've been talking to me. He said, but I, I don't understand. If Jesus Christ is the Son of God, why did he have to be born of a woman? And all the, the, the cleric didn't want me to answer that. And so, man, all of a sudden, he's motor mouth. You know, and, and uh, uh, so... Uh, I'm saying, Lord, I'm going to tell this guy. <laughs> I mean, if I had to sit here all day and all night, I'm going to tell this guy. I ain't going nowhere. It's time to clear the schedule. And uh, his cell phone rang, and it was an important message. He had to take the call. And so he went out of the room. I, I, I opened my Bible, turned to Hebrews, and showed him why Jesus Christ had to be born of a woman. Amen. Amen. I gave him an Arab New Testament. I gave him gospel tracts. All I had three or four different tracts in Arabic. I gave him those those gospel tracts, and, and uh, so uh, anyway, uh, you know, he's got the message. Oh, brother Fort, uh, it's feel like a re great meal. I hate to quit eating, but we got to stop right now for a break. We got to start church in about eight minutes, so you have a break. And thank you for listening to this man. Uh, just. Uh, Hope you're touched. All right, you're dismissed. We'll start at 11 o'clock.